this, eh? Morning, ladies. Guess who's coming to dinner? Sydney Poitier? I believe what we have here is a failure to communicate. Okay, what's going on? Somebody made us an offer we couldn't refuse. Now in all the FBI bullpens and all the towns in all the world, he's got to walk into ours. Who is? I'll give you a hint. I don't follow the rules. I make them. Adam Kinsey in Final Flight. Oh my gosh, Adam Kinsey is coming here? Adam Kinsey, the actor? He's not an actor. He's a movie star. Real actors work in the theater. Why is he coming here? He's playing an FBI agent in some movie, and the powers that be feel that it'll do for the Bureau what Top Gun did for the Navy. So Mr. Kinsey's come to Washington to research his character and follow around some real live FBI super agents. Oh yeah, good idea. Better keep that drool in check. Well, like we wouldn't be mopping up the floor from your slobber if instead of Adam Kinsey, it was Charlie Theron or Halle Berry. Regardless of what we may or may not think about him, our mandate is to be courteous, helpful, and make sure he doesn't get killed. You know, if he were to stay in the bullpen the whole time, we could pretty much ensure that. And I would be happy to fill him in on anything he needs to know. Hey, works for me. That way he wouldn't whine every time we tell him, no, you can't run the siren. By the way, he's been assigned to shadow you. D, no. Hey, save your breath. Came from a higher pay grade than mine. <laughs> Look at the bright side. Maybe you can learn something from him. As acting supervisor, I have to put an end to this banter and frivolity. By the way, acting supervisor, you're very believable in the role. I can hardly tell you're acting at all. Thank you, Miles. And thank you, members of the Academy. Now, may we begin? Sue, what's the deal going on with Howie? Howie knows a guy who works for a guy who seemed to have come into a shipment of guns recently. But do we know what kind of guns? How many? Howie is working on getting more information. Jack and I will meet with him later and see if... Hi. Uh, thanks so much for getting me here. Hey, Demetrius Gans, acting supervisor. Adam Kinsey, shadowing actor. Well, good to meet you. <laughs> this is our team. This is Tara Williams. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. Lucy Dodson. Hi, Lucy. Hello. Sue Thomas. And this is Levi. He's my hearing doc. <laughs> Put her there, buddy. Yeah. Jack Hudson. Hey. Bobby Manning. How you going? Miles Leland, the third. Adam Kinsey, the first. Uh-huh. Uh, I really appreciate you guys letting me hang out, um, but I don't want any special treatment. I know you guys have jobs to do, and I don't want to get in the way. So I'm just going to be a fly on the wall and um, soak up as much as I can. And hopefully that's OK with everybody. Yeah, that's fine. That's what we're here for. Great. Miles, I need a uh, non-fat decaf mocha frappuccino. No whip. Kidding. <laughs> Come on, I'm sure. Fasten your seatbelts, boys. It's going to be a bumpy ride. And never see the seven wonders That'll be alright Should my tender heart be broken I will cry those teardrops knowing I will be just fine Cause nothing changes who I am I am
all these people are staring, I guess you get that all the time. Yeah. Must get old. It's a real hardship. So, tell me about this guy we're meeting. His name's Howie. He's a snitch. He provides us with information. Gathering gossip from the man on the street. I didn't realize the FBI was so high tech. He's more than just the man on the street. He's become almost like family. Yeah, kind of like that uncle no one talks about. Sometimes we get information from technology, sometimes from satellites, sometimes from a Howie. Jackie! Sue. Hey, Levi, my man, give me five. <laughs> Hi, Howie. This is Adam. Hey, how you? Whoa, 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 who do we got here? <laughs> I mean, I know who it is, but how could it be? Because what would he be doing here with you two? Uh, how he finds. Yeah. yeah, you need it, how he finds it. Yeah, I wrote that myself, by the way. Adam Kinsey, <laughs> how you doing? I don't follow the rules, I make the rules. <laughs> it's pretty good, huh? <laughs> He's doing research for a movie. Oh, I don't suppose it do me any good to tell you I got a great idea for a screenplay, huh? Uh, perhaps what? another time. For now, let's hear more about that shipment of guns you were talking about. From what I hear, about 40 Chinese AK-47 knockoffs. What's your connection to all of this? A guy I know, Otis Washington, fences high-end electronics. But now his supplier wants him to find a buyer for the guns. But the big O, uh, that's what I call Otis, doesn't want nothing to do with guns. Why did Otis tell you this? I'm sorry, I was just trying to put myself in your place and that's what came out. Otis went to Howie because he knows Howie's an entrepreneur and because Howie's put the word out on the street that he's interested in all kinds of deals. Because we told him to. And I'm just naturally thinking like an FBI agent these days. So an alarm went off that said I should tell my co-workers at the Bureau about this. Big O's ride two strikes, but he's a sweetheart. If you had something on him, I don't think it would take a lot to flip him, you know, in my semi-professional opinion. <laughs> Thanks to my new pen camera and the accompanying video recorder in my car, I happen to have footage of Otis talking to the aforementioned as yet unnamed supplier. It sends a wireless signal to the VCR in my car. I shoot over here, it records it over there. I'm in great shape unless a bus goes by. Unfortunately, I wasn't close enough to get the audio on the meeting, so it's a little extra work for you. Good work, Harry. Just, uh, you know, happy to be of service to my country. Joe Pesci. Excuse me? Your speech patterns, your mannerisms. You're doing Joe Pesci. Uh-huh. <laughs> you shouldn't be surprised to know that's not the first time I've heard that comparison. But the truth is, Joe Pesci is doing me. He knows my cousin's sister-in-law, and I have it on good authority that he used to see me around the neighborhood. So you might say I created my cousin Vinny. Or you might not. Uh, we gotta split, Howie. Thanks. We'll get back to you on this. Jackie, Sue, Levi, always a pleasure. Adam, if you want to hear that screenplay idea, you call my people and we will set something up. The man in the hat is saying you can make a lot of money. Supply and demand and people demand guns. So this is legal? Eavesdropping like this? It is a private conversation. In a public place. If they were in Otis's house, they'd have an expectation of privacy. But outside, in a park, they don't. Otis says something about find your cell car parts, plasma TV. But I told you, Mel, no guns. How do you do it? How do you do it? The lip reading. Um, years of practice and having a determined mother and a dedicated speech teacher didn't hurt. Any tips for a guy just starting out? A lot of words can look alike. The mouth makes the same shape for them. Like ba, ma, pa. So you try to get enough words in the sentence to figure out the context. If I said, um, something about a fight. I said, uh, you should have won an Oscar for a final flight.
Mel doesn't show up in any of our databases, and none of the Mel's that we know of match his description, so we are gonna have to go through Otis to get to him and the guns. Howard told Otis he has a buyer for the plasma screen TV. Uh, what Otis doesn't know is that the buyer will be an FBI agent. He sells us a hot ticket item, we flip him, the deal's set to go down tomorrow. Lucy. Yes. Any questions? Uh, how about I take you guys out for dinner tonight? I would love to pick your brains. Great. Gotta eat somewhere. Do you suppose the women folk even know we're gone? I'm starting to get an idea of what the Invisible Man feels like on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not good. Hold on. Here we go. Here's you're not invisible anymore. Hi. Hi. I was watching you. Really? You came in with Adam Kinsey, didn't you? Are you his people? Uh. We would really love to meet him. Punctuality is apparently not one of Otis's strong suits. On the off chance that he also fences watches, perhaps he could procure one for himself. This is a new generation of bad guy. No respect for his fellow criminal. Hello, everyone. Lucy, what are you doing here? Oh, I just, uh, it's my lunch hour. I thought I'd come by and see what's going on. Glad you did. Don't let me get in your way. No, no, you're fine. It's quite cozy in here. Here he comes. Hey, big old, my man. <laughs> get out of here with that, man. People don't high five anymore. What are you, product of the 80s? It's just the guy Miles I was telling you about. Give me five. He might be more comfortable with that than something more current. Here you're in the market for a new TV? Now I hear you got one heck of a sale going on. 50 inch plasma screen I could give you for 4500 Oh, that's a good price, huh? Yeah, if I wanted to pay that much, I could get a new one from a place that also offers a receipt and an optional warranty. Can't blame your brother for trying. But I do want your business, so. 2500 1500 cash, no questions asked. I don't think my client's gonna be happy with that. All right. So cash on the barrel head, Big O. I mean, no waiting for the check to clear, right? I don't take checks. I know, it was more of a figure of speech. I, I know you didn't just come down here with this $1,500, so I'm guessing there's more bills where those came from. $1,750 and insurance. You're right. This guy's good. <laughs> I wouldn't bother counting it there, Big O. You're just gonna be getting it back anyway. See, I'm FBI. And those SUVs you see coming toward us, those are my friends. This ain't what you think it is, okay? You're gonna be thanking me for this before it's all done. Unless you're doing business with me. We know the guy you're fencing TVs for also has some nasty firearms for sale. Needless to say, that is where our real interest lies. I don't have nothing to do with no guns. Yeah, we believe you. Howie tells us you're not a bad guy. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Try to keep a certain reputation. We want the guy you're working for. And we want those guns. Name's Mel. Don't know his last name. It's the way we do business. First names only. Do you know where he lives? When Mel answers, step out of the way, we'll take care of the rest. Is that some kind of signal? I'm afraid it is. Found him just inside the doorway. Shot enough times to let us know somebody definitely wanted him dead. I, uh, I want to see it. The dead body. I don't think that's such a good idea. My character sees several dead bodies. I really need to know what that experience is, is like. What this way? I told you I didn't want nothing to do with those guns. You see what happens? That's what happens. I want out. Don't want to be a part of this. What you don't understand, Otis, is you just got in. And I don't like in, which is why I want out. Truth is, Otis, Howie was right. He did you a favor. 
Now all you have to do is keep cooperating and we keep you safe. You don't want those guns out on the street either. You got a chance to turn your whole life around. Heads up! Incoming! <laughs> Where are Tara and Lucy when you want them? That look like method acting to you? Yo, home sweet hotel. I appreciate the ride. So, so much for the macho image, huh? What happened happens to a lot of agents the first time they see a dead body. Especially if it's one that's been dead for a few days. Did you? No. No. But it did give me nightmares for a while. Well, I guess I can look forward to that. Miles, I know, lost it the first couple times, I think. Thanks. I'll uh, see you guys tomorrow. Good night. You are going to tell the guys to keep what happened to themselves, right? Yeah, I said I would, didn't I? And whether or not they keep it to themselves, I can't control that. Okay, we start out with some simple, basic questions we call control questions. Ready? That is a very simple, basic question. <laughs> that wasn't one of them. But this is. Is your name Adam Kinsey? Yes. So that's your real name. Okay, so far so good. Strapping yourself up to a polygraph. You really take this uh, researching the character thing seriously, don't you? So, let me ask you something. Is Charlize Theron as beautiful in person? Yes. What's going on? We're giving Adam a polygraph test. If Starsky and Hutch would leave us alone. Okay. <clears throat> Were you born in California? Yes. Have you ever fantasized about giving a document to a foreign agent? No. Is it true you threw up yesterday when you saw the dead guy? I didn't say anything, but, uh... Word has a way of making it around this building in record time. Answer the question, please. Y yes, that information is accurate. Gotta love a guy who admits to something like that. You know, men think women prefer macho, but when given the choice, we prefer real. And plus, I'm hooked up to a polygraph, so you're gonna know if I'm lying anyway. <laughs> I have one. Are you attracted to anyone in this office? Yes. He's telling the truth. Uh, you are an actor, is that correct? Yes. Are you acting now? No. Good morning, everyone. Um, we're, we're done here. Oh. First item. Something that came up in the morning briefing. There's a tanker truck been reported missing from a Wessels Trucking Company in Virginia. Price of gas these days, I'm not surprised. Well, what does the price of gas have to do with it? Get yourself a tanker truck, fill it up with stolen gasoline, definitely some decent money to be made. Let's hope that's all it is. At any rate, everybody check with your sources, see if they know anything. Next item, Jack. What's the latest with the dead guy? Yeah, we've ID'd the body. His name is Mel Shemsky. He appears to have been a small-time arms dealer by night and a mild-mannered civil servant by day. Uh, probate officer, to be exact. Doesn't exactly match the profile. Everybody's branching out these days. It's the modern culture. Everybody wants to be a hyphenate. One of the things they found in his house was a receipt for a rented warehouse. An excellent place to keep a few dozen Chinese machine guns, if one was so inclined. Perhaps we should find out. Somebody has to ask the obvious question. How do you accumulate all of this on a probate clerk's salary? 
Hi there, our friend the late Mel Shemsky managed to stretch $40,000 a year to unimaginable proportions, or there's another explanation that's more than likely illegal. It's maybe what we're looking for. I'm guessing somebody else was looking for this too. Fully automatic, which means it's fully illegal. This whole scenario is like a commercial for why we need gun control in this country. If by gun control you mean keeping the guns out of the bad guys' control, we're all for that. Well, that's why we need more laws. So somebody can't put 40 machine guns like these out on the street. Uh, the late Mr. Shemsky already broke about 20 laws just having these guns. I suspect one more law probably wouldn't have made much difference. No, I think it's safe to say that whoever killed him isn't all that concerned with the law in general. So I suppose you also believe that guns don't kill people? People kill people. And sometimes they use guns. But the good news is, they won't be using these ones. Let's get them out of here. I'll put SOG on this place in case somebody comes back looking for them. You got it, Chief. Sue and I talked to Mel Shamsky's co workers. It turns out our dead probate clerk handled funeral arrangements for people without heirs or families and then liquidated their estates. But instead of selling everything and turning the proceeds over to who he was supposed to, Mel was keeping some of the good stuff for himself. And when his co-workers wondered how he could afford such a lavish lifestyle on his salary, he told them he inherited the money from wealthy relatives. What he didn't say was that the relatives weren't his. Uh, so what does this have to do with the guns we found in the warehouse? It was Mel's bad fortune to be handling probate for a guy named Louis Martin. We'll call him Unlucky Louis. He just happened to have a fatal heart attack while in the process of handling a shipment of guns. Now, our probate clerk, Mel, knew that nobody was going to lay claim to a shipment of guns, so he kept them, thinking he'd get a good price for them on the street. So, we've got the guns, and we know who's dealing them. The only thing we don't know is who was supposed to get them. We know that, too. We ran a bullet we took out of Mel's forehead through drug fire. Uh, drug fire is a database that matches up bullets taken from other drug cases. This one matched bullets taken from two other victims, both of which Metro PD believes were killed by a local gang, the Serpents. Metro PD also said that they heard the Serpents had put a down payment on some guns that never showed up. So, word gets back to the gang, Mel has them, and when the Serpents approach Mel, he tries to sell them guns they've already paid for. Never a good thing. Since Mel was used to dealing with small-time fences like Otis, not hardcore gang types, he underestimated what they might do to him. So, much to Mel's surprise and chagrin, they killed him. Very impressive. Here we are back at the barn, we're all still on our horses. So, what do we do now? We do the only noble thing. We arrange to give the guns back to their rightful owners, serpents. So, per your request, I put the word out that the dearly departed Mel bequeathed his stash, including the guns, to his business associate, AKA, my buddy Otis. <laughs> I ain't your buddy. I ain't your buddy. <laughs> did I tell you he's a kidder? <laughs> I ain't kidding. Howie, did the serpents take the bait or not? Oh, Jackie, I'm hurt. You think I'm not gonna deliver for you? You know, this is exactly like a scene in my screenplay. Howie. Otis and I are meeting Chico, the serpents' leader, and his lieutenants tomorrow at Mel's old warehouse to hand over the guns. Good. We wire the place with pinhole cams and mics. So if they check your truth for wires, you won't have any trouble. First class operation, these guys. <laughs> hey, hey, Big O, we, we gotta work out our dialogue you know, with opportunities for improvisation dependent upon what Chico and his crew feed us. It's an acting term, right? Feeding the line. <laughs> Hey, trust me, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be like one of those buddy movies. You, you know, I, I already got my whole backstory worked out. You do that, right? Right? Huh? You figure out your character's whole life history? Hey, like in your first movie. Well, what was your backstory, huh? No grocery money. Ah, oh, you know, I felt that from the character. One cream, no sugar, right? Right. I was trying my FBI observational skills and I started with the coffee. Thanks, but uh, I don't drink anything before we do a sting. They can sometimes take longer than we planned. Oh. I wondered if I could talk to you about something. Sure. These last few days, I've really enjoyed working with you. 
and I feel like we've gotten to know each other. I hope this isn't inappropriate, but you're friends with Tara, right? Do you know? Is she seeing anyone? Ashley, right now, I I'm not sure, but I know who would know. Tara. Bobby, Niles, you don't have any plans for the next few days because you have just won an all-expenses-paid trip for two to Malaysia. What exactly did we do to deserve this honor? It's not exactly what you've done, but what the Malaysian authorities have done. Just pick up Nabil Mustafa. Who's Nabil Mustafa? Known terrorist that's been on our watch list for activities we're not at liberty to discuss. The Malaysians took him into custody for having illegal materials, including explosives. Our legal, at, legal attaché in the region says the Malaysians are willing to let us talk with them. You leave this afternoon. Me calling for your mom if you don't stop that. Look, I understand. Look, you got opening night jitters. Perfectly normal. They should be here by now. Maybe they're not coming. Are you sure Otis is up to this? I mean, I can tell when an actor doesn't have the chops, and that's what I'm feeling here. He'll be fine. They're here. All teams, stand by. Nice stash, but I don't like to make personal appearances. Uh, understandable, a uh, man of your renowned stature. Uh, but, but Otis here, yeah, uh, he wanted to make sure that you received the guns personally. Uh, after what ha happened to Mellonhall. Not saying you did anything or nothing. An unfortunate accident. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thing is, Due to Mel's unfortunate accident, all his stuff, all this stuff, uh, got left to me. Including the guns. Big O was anxious to, you know, avoid his own unfortunate accident, so he thought it was best to make a deal. So, uh, you, uh, get your guns back, and he gets a small handling fee. And what do you get? Agent's fee. Ten <laughs> percent. Oh, and if you're interested in any of the other items we got here, you... you got the money. You show me the guns. I'll show you the money. That's the merchandise. Stand by. Consider this a lesson learned. No, no, no. on your back. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh. Well, Ogan, what's the matter? Come on. Hey, man, we're in a hit here. Hey, good work, Otis. Wasn't it, Sue? I mean, did he do a great job or what? Yeah, almost getting killed is my favorite way of spending a day. I know it must have been scary for you, but we said we wouldn't let you get hurt. We removed the firing pins and the guns. But you try remembering that when you're staring down the business end of a gun barrel. Hey, for my money, that was your crowning moment. You sold it like a pro. I mean, you, you had them believe and you really thought you were going to die. I don't want to hear it, Howie. You got me into this and you could have gotten me killed. Truth is, Otis, you could have been killed. But not here. 
Not today. If Harry hadn't told us about you, Chico would have still found out you work for Mel, and he would have come after you. Maybe you think it was bad luck Harry came along when he did. Or maybe it wasn't luck at all. God has a way of making things happen at exactly the right time. And he often uses the people we never think he will. Whether you realize it or not, Harry cared enough about you to want to help you. And he saved your life. I was wrong. Turns out Otis was perfect casting. Thankfully, the props worked the way they were supposed to, or he wouldn't be making any sequels. I guess that's the difference when we put on a performance. Otis and I were wondering, um, what are you gonna do with all that stuff in the warehouse? Because, you know, we could probably move it for you. We? Uh, as in you two? Well, we talked it over and think there might be some merit in it, you know, us going into business together, you know. Turns out he's a method actor. It takes him a while to get out of character. So, the stuff? You need help moving it? Unless you mean to a government warehouse, I don't think so. But I have a feeling you'll make a good team. Yeah. Fines and Washington. <laughs> it's got a nice ring to it, don't you think? <laughs> Washington and Fines. Sort of rolls off the tongue a little bit better. Yeah, obviously we still got a few details to work out. Yeah. Fines and Washington. You gotta go alphabetical. Come on, this is what everyone does. How'd it go? Good. Pretty much as planned. That's good. Did Adam have a good time? Mm, I think he did. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. I saw you talking to him earlier. It looked like he was asking you out. Uh, he didn't ask me out. He asked me if Tara was seeing anyone. Me? I think he's interested. You, you did tell him I was available? Well, I, I wasn't sure. I thought you might still be seeing Stanley. So you told him I wasn't available? I told him he'd have to ask you. Stanley's great, but we only went out a few times. It's not like she could date Stanley anyway. He's been on assignment in Chicago for three months. Right, so it's not like he and I are exclusive. So what did he say when you told him you'd have to ask Tara? He said he just might do that. Did he happen to say when? Hi. Hi. Jack, um, I'd like to ask you about what went down out there today. Well, we used a small-time, not-so-bad guy to lead us to some considerably worse bad guys. Pretty routine FBI stuff. I mean how the gang leader aimed his gun at Otis and pulled the trigger. You knew the gun wasn't gonna fire, therefore nobody was gonna get killed. How can you say that's attempted murder? Because he didn't know it wouldn't fire. Now, when someone aims a gun that they think is loaded, at another person at point blank range and pulls the trigger, we can be reasonably sure that they are making an attempt to murder someone. Jack, we got a possible situation. A small utility plane was detected flying into the restricted airspace over DC. Then almost immediately, the pilot turns off all avionics and hightails it back out of the space at tree level. Well, what's the big deal? I mean, maybe somebody just got a little off course and panicked when they realized it. Sounds more like someone purposely went in and turned off the avionics in order to get out without being identified or followed. For what reason? To test the security response in the restricted airspace. See how much time they had before a fighter jet was breathing down their neck. That'd be my first guess. Important information to have if you're thinking of planning an attack. No offense, guys, but it sounds a little paranoid to me. When you have to be right 100% of the time, you're allowed to be paranoid. Terrorists only have to be right once to succeed. The plane was abandoned in an empty field. It's being dusted for prints as we speak. 
This is the airstrip it was clear to take off from. Take Sue, see what you can find. It's okay if I ride along? No, yes. D, I don't... He's been given access. You can go along. Sorry to bother you. Then don't. I ain't one of those multitaskers. I can only do one thing at a time, and at the moment I'm doing this. FBI, ma'am. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, why didn't you say so? I've been expecting you. You're here about the plane. Right. How you doing? Are you... Is he... Oh, yeah. Oh, do you have an 8 by 10 glossy with you? We like to collect and hang the pictures of all the famous people who come through here. We put them up on our wall of fame. You know, before you, the most famous was Walter Brennan. That's him. Of course, that was uh, a while ago. I'll tell you what, I don't have any 8 by 10s on me, but if you give me an address, I'll make sure you get one. Huh. Great. Now that that's settled, do you mind, ma'am, telling us about the person you rented the plane to earlier today? Oh, yeah. That's him. Hakim Sharif. He was Middle Eastern. Yeah. You know, you're not allowed to profile, and he had all the proper ID, so we had to rent him the plane. I don't make the rules. I just follow them. Is that the guy? Yeah, only his name's not Hakeem Sharif, it's Hamad Rahman, or at least that's what it says on his passport. We got his fingerprint from the abandoned plane, and now that customs can take fingerprints and pictures of travelers from certain countries coming into the U.S., we were able to match the print and get his photo. You gotta love the Patriot Act, huh? What's next, you can't buy groceries without getting fingerprinted? Oh, don't worry, Adam, that's only if you're a terrorist. According to customs, Ramad flew into Dulles from Saudi Arabia two days ago. But Haman Rahman is not a name on our watch list. Our legal in that area is checking to see what he can find out. In the meantime, let's see if there's anything we can find out about him over here. Things can change fast around here. Huh. Whiplash is a common affliction at the FBI. You seem to be holding it pretty well, though. I've learned from the best. I've enjoyed working with you all, and getting to know you. I've, uh, we've enjoyed getting to know you too. I kind of like the way you started it the first time. Because I was wondering if you're not seeing anyone, maybe you'd like to. I'd love to. Great. Yeah, great. Really, it's great. Everybody listen up. We just got word. Two more tanker trucks have been reported missing. One in New Mexico, one in Ohio. This feels more like an organized effort. Uh, what do you mean? I can't help the feeling that if the wrong people fill those trucks with gasoline or worse, they can easily become bombs on wheels. You pick the right place to blow them up, they could cause major damage. Just the kind of event Al-Qaeda likes. You think terrorists stole those trucks? Uh, we're starting to get into some sensitive areas on this. I'm not sure if this is something you should be a part of. Wait, you're saying I have to leave? That's what I'm saying. But this is the kind of stuff I need to know, and this is exactly what my character's involved in. Help me here, Dee. I'm sorry, Adam. Look, it's nothing personal. If this turns out not to be terrorism, you're welcome back. Well, it was really nice meeting you. You too. I appreciate all your hospitality. Hey, maybe we can uh, double sometime. You and Tara, and me and one of your famous good-looking friends. You bet. Huh. I'll see you at the movies. I guess we'll always almost have Georgetown. I'll call you. Really? Great. Yeah. Great. And, um, 
Tell him that I promise not to try and steal any national secrets from him. I don't suppose you'd happen to have an antacid on you. Must have left him in my other pants. Bit of an upset stomach? It goes with the territory on these trips. Mr. Leland, here's your hotel reservation and airline ticket. Your upset stomach will follow shortly. The secret is not to drink the water. I never drink the water. But you had ice in your coat. Ice is just water in a solid yeah, state. I drank that before I realized what I was doing. Then I was hoping the freezing process might kill the bacteria. Or preserve it. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this. Jack, Bob is on line one. Talk to me. Miles and I are in the Beale Mustafa's apartment, and we've uh, come across something. Bobby, hang on. I've got to put you on speakerphone. Okay, go ahead. We found a file on Mustafa's computer that referenced a meeting here in Kuala Lumpur two weeks ago. The uh, list of those in attendance reads like a terrorist who's who. Several are on our watch list. The name Hamad Rahman doesn't happen to be on that list, does it? Hamad Rahman? Uh, yeah. Matter of fact, it does, but him I'm not familiar with. He entered the U.S. a few days ago. Yesterday, he rented a utility plane, flew it in a restricted D.C. airspace, but uh, ditched it in a field before anybody could get him. Bobby, it's deep. Is Mustafa giving you anything? Zip. And the Yemeni authorities are making strong demands on the Malaysians that he be returned home to them. We can't let that happen. Couldn't agree more, mate. But the Malaysians are given every indication they're going to give him back to Yemen unless we take him ourselves in the next 24 hours. A plane's gone missing. Another utility plane? No, a 727 cargo plane. It was parked in the Mojave airport. Now it's gone. No one can find it. We got to bring Mustafa back here, Bobby. Something's going on, and he's our best bet to find out what it is. We'll call the Attorney General and make it happen. Yep. There's too many coincidences here for it to be coincidence. I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs>